This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. So if you're looking to pick up magic product, sealed product, singles, check out the link in the description below and use the code KENOBI at checkout. That will get you 5% off your order and it helps to support the channel to keep making videos like these. And don't forget Ultra Pro also bring you these videos. They help to support the channel too. More on that in a moment when we talk about some of their wonderful products. Fun fact, Oprah Winfrey really loves bees. She once forced an entire room, an entire audience of her show, when she wasn't peddling uh, weird spirit magic that actually damages people. When she wasn't doing that, she was actually force feeding them bees. <laughs> This is a rendition, a new updated version of a deck that has been popular on the channel before, Red Green Bee Combo. This is Naya Bees, with a slight blue splash in the fact that we have a Yorion Sky Serpent in the sideboard. The deck is 80 cards because of Yorion, which means we can fit in more than one combo. Let's talk about the combo that everybody knows. Let's talk about the combo that everybody might know, but think is shit. Our first combo is Vizier of Remedies and Devoted Druid, which means that we can go ahead and tap and untap 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 and untap. That's a devoted druid to make a shit ton of fucking mana. The outlet for that then is to kill them with a walking ballista. If walking ballista is not in hand, we have three copies of Dust Watch Recruiter. Dust Watch Recruiter allows us to activate it for three mana to look for a creature. And if you have infinite mana, you can activate it infinitely and find that walking ballista. Consistency comes in the form of Eldritch Evolution, which allows us to go and grab a Dust Watch Recruiter or another part of the combo. Or Court of Calling again to grab Dust Watch Recruiter or another part of the combo. Eldritch Evolution and Court of Calling also factor into the next combo, which is Hornets next. It synergizes with Red and Six. We can punch it each turn to make a 1-1-B one, one that has Death Touch and Flying, so it's annoying as fuck. But the main combo pieces are thus. Volcano Hellion is a one-off because we can call for an Eldritch Evolution for it. It is a 6-5, four mana Hellion from Planar Chaos, I think was the set. This creature has Echo, where Echo is your life total, but forget about that shit. When Volcano Hellion enters the battlefield, it deals an amount of damage of your choice to you and target creature. The target, this damage cannot be prevented. Basically, when it enters the battlefield, you pay life to shoot something for some damage. So if you have a Hornet's Nest in play, you can pay, I don't know, 17, 16 life to make 16 motherfucking bees. The other part of the combo is everybody's favorite Wrath Effect from Commander. It's Blasphemous Act. It is a 9 mana, 13 damage to all creatures in play. That costs 1 less for each creature that's on the battlefield. So it will be cost reduced by ourselves generating tokens and playing bodies. But also if our opponent generates tokens or plays bodies, it reduces the cost. Then we cast it with a horn and a nest in play and we get to make 13 motherfucking bees. Which will, over 2 turns, kill our opponent. We can make this an instantaneous OTK or 1 turn kill. The perf force in our deck allows us to ping our opponent for two damage whenever a creature enters the battlefield. If 13 bees enter the battlefield, oh baby, 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 that's going to be 13 lots of two damage, which is roughly a million. But wait, there's more. Our third surprise combo is Bolas Reckoning. This little minotaur allows us to shoot our opponent in the face to finish them off with Volcano Hellion if we have more life than they do. Also, it allows us to shoot them for 13 with a Blasphemous Act, which if we whittle them down, we'll kill them. But wait, there's more. That's right, for the value of one free view on YouTube, you get it four fucking combos for your we go back to Vizio Remedies and we find Kitchen Finks. The old school modern combo for infinite life with Malira, but it's slightly different. You can't play Malira in this deck because Malira doesn't play well. The Devoted Druid in your class pay the cost to tap in. When Finks comes back to the battlefield and tries to put a counter on itself, Vizio Remedies reduces that counter to 12 by 1, so it's back to being a 3 2. That means all you need is a sack outlet to go infinite life. Our sack outlet of choice is a fucking strange one. It's Thermopod. It's 5 mana. It, you can LG Evolution into it from Kitchen Finks or other 3 drops, for example, and it also generates mana to allow us to chain off and do some more things. I may have forgot to put Snowlands in the deck though, don't judge me. And that's right, that's the deck. There's four combos and then an assorted collection of spells. Perhaps the most important ones being the Ren and Six to make our land drops and make our bees. Rather profoundly, our sideboard is a selection of spells to help us fight certain things in the metagame. I could explain it to you, but look, sideboard guides are for losers. You don't want to see a sideboard guide right now.
Our worst matchups are any decks in the format that actually do their thing relatively quickly or proactively. And our best matches in the format are going to be anything that's just not doing anything so we can assemble our rather funky combos and kill them. Do we win? Do we lose? I don't know, but hopefully the video is interesting nonetheless. If you enjoy these videos, there's two things I want to shout out to you before we get into the game. Firstly, Patreon. For $2 a month, you can get access to my Discord server. You get a free altar sleeve each month, like this one on screen right now. And you get access to any events that we run on the server. We recently had a webcam, modern league, and a 40k league over there as well. And it helps to support the show. But beyond that, don't forget that Ultra Pro bring you this channel with their wonderful selection of products that help you to keep your collectibles safe. From the Eclipse sleeves, through to wonderful playmats with official Magic Gathering art on it, right through to cube and tower versions of their satin deck boxes. I'm a big fan of Ultra Pro's range. There is a link in the description below, and if you use the code Kenobi at checkout, you get 5% off your order there directly from Ultra Pro. But all of these products are available at all good local game stores. With that out of the way, let's smash some fucking bees into our opponents. Bees. Welcome to replay time because I didn't record live whilst playing this game. We won the die roll. We reveal a Yorion from our hand and we have this, this collection of spells. We crack our arid mace so we grab our stomping grounds and we use it to cast an abundant growth to draw a card. Our opponent goes stomping ground into search for tomorrow suspended. They are on some form of scape shift or titan. Spoiler alert, it's going to be scape shift. They bolt our Duskwatch recruiter that we play. We make three mana and we cast a hornet's nest. That's right, it's time to make some fucking bees. Well, I hope. I mean, we're a little way off. Blasphemous Act does cost a significant amount of mana. I put an untaps and the suspended for search tomorrow ticks down. They cast it and they go and grab themselves a forest. A very pretty forest, by the way. One of the unsanctioned ones. Here comes a Renin Sick. They don't down tick on our Hornet's Nest without idiots. They instead grab a fetch, play it, get a mountain, and play a Prismatic Omen. Now, for those of you that don't know, Prismatic Omen makes all their lands into all types, which means they're all mountains, even this forest here. Even if the MTGO uh, interface is a bit fucky. What this means is they can scape shift into Valakut plus mountains. Valakut itself will count itself as a mountain, and you can do a shit ton of damage. We prismatic ending the prismatic omen. That's right. Pr hot prismatic on prismatic action. Ugh. Our opponent gets back a fetch line with Renin 6 again. This is a problem for us. The more land drops they hit, the closer we get to the inevitability of them scape shifting us to death. We play a Birds of Paradise. They continue to loop lands with the Renin 6, but they aren't doing anything besides that. We draw our Thermopod which is a card that I've added to the deck to allow us to have a Sacrifice Outlet off of Eldritch Evolution or Cord to allow us to infinitely combo with the Kitchen Fink's Vizier of Remedies combo. However, it has some extra text on it where it gains haste into end of turn if you have a snow land to activate it. It's a snow mana. Uh, I forgot to, to put snow lands in. These basics should be snow lands. This is a five mana sack outlet that makes mana, but it can't gain haste. If it could gain haste, we can actually hit the Renin 6 down here, and that would stop it from ultimating. If the Renin 6 down ticks on 7, and then they've got a bolt in the bin, we are in a bad fucking spot. And my deck building was fucking trash. I cast the Thermopod anyway. It's a 4-3, right? Unless they've got a bolt for it, it should be able to do some slapping of faces. They crack a tarn, they get a dwarven mine, they make a dwarf, which gets us closer. Oh fuck, two dwarves. Holy shit. They make Blasphemous Act cheaper. This is madness. Ren and six down ticks on our birds of paradise, and we're going to float a green mana right now. After double dwarfing and going to the second main phase, they cast Wish. You may play a card you own from outside the game. Comment section, place your bets now. What do you think they're going to cast? Is it going to be A, a scape shift, B, a scape shift, or C, going to be scape shift? Did you guess correctly? It's scape shift. They sacrifice a shitload of lands. Into play comes a Valakut. Plus uh, more mountains. For those of you who are new to all of this, this is Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle. It ends the battlefield tap, but that's not the important text on this card. Whenever a mountain ends the battlefield under your control, and if you control at least five other mountains, you may have Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, deal three damage to any target. What that means is that the uh, pinnacle is erupting. It is shooting things with volcanic ash and sulfur and lava. 
But in reality, what it really means is when you escape shift into it alongside six other mountains, you're going to go ahead and shoot people multiple times. Here we see all the mountains see each other and Valakut triggers four times. That's four Valakut triggers. At this point, I thought I was dead. But then I realized four times three is only 12. That's quick maths. And we are on 16 life. We will survive this. We will survive. They shoot our thermopod with one of them because they respect the slug. The rest of them go to face because they don't want to give us a load of hornets. Somebody is scared of bees, like that girl in Bridgerton. Wait, was it the guy in Bridgerton? I wasn't really paying attention. The scene confused the shit out of me. My wife had to explain how the character's father had died from a bee sting or something. Anyway, let's Bridgerton. On our turn, we untap and we've got a Blasphemous Act costing us a whole six mana. It's time. I go to tap. I decide not to tap. I go to tap again. I decide to cast Abundant Growth first, which I think is risky. Do I do that? I do do that. That's wrong. I should not do this. I hit a land drop because sometimes... Oh, hang on. I didn't have enough mana anyway. Six mana, I have five. That was the correct thing to do. Old me was doing the right thing. Spike Lee would be proud. We pass back to our opponent, they untap with a five loyalty red and six and two entire dwarf tokens. Every mountain they play now is a lightning bolt to our face. They tick up the Ren and Six, obviously, and they get back a dwarf in mind. They sacrifice was captured earlier, generating a 1 1 dwarf and bolting us in the face down to 4. We are in squeaky bum territory. We are in 5p territory. If the size of your anus is normally a 50 pence piece, at the moment I'm clenching so hard that's a 5 pence piece. You could push sand through my arsehole and it would make diamonds. No attacks because they don't want us to have any bees understandable really we crack off foothills going to three meaning we are dead we are dead to valakut right now on their end step we called of calling for five whole mana when you add the tapping of a creature to that we get to convoke yeah that's right convoke you can read this text somewhere else i'm not gonna explain everything to you fuck so we get to cord for three with five mana and tapping of a creature we go into our deck into our deck what would you get here comment section i mean the card stands out like a fucking sore thumb anyway but what would you get this is the engagement moment i'm not joking type in the comment section down below before i tell you what i get what would you get here deck list in the description below as well if you want to take a closer look at my deck we of course get a boros reckoner we untap we draw kitchen things and we now have access to blasphemous act when we blasphemous act we will generate 13 bees but there will be something sick and we'll do 13 damage but our opponents on 14 we need to do one damage to them so we are going to attack with the Boros Reckoner. Now they could block here. If they block with a dwarf, they take one, put them to 13, put them into Blasphemous Act range. If they block with three dwarves, they take three, but they kill enough creatures that we can't actually cast Blasphemous Act. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We would be a mana short of Blasphemous Acting them. Also, the Boros Reckoner would die. Further to that, if they block with all three and we activated Boris Reckoner's second bit of text for one red mana to allow us to first strike down the dwarves, we would then have three dwarves dead, they'd be on 14, and we couldn't Blasphemous Act because we wouldn't have the mana. Basically, they need to block with all three dwarves not to die. Do they see the line? We move to the combat step, and we engage in glorious, glorious combat. We turn our Boris Reckoner sideways. We go to the blocker step, and this is the moment of truth. If they declare a block with all three dwarves, we don't kill them this turn. They untap, and all they need to do is play one singular mountain, which they can do because Ren and Six will just grab this fucking mountain. If they block with two dwarves, they die. If they block with one dwarf, they die. If they block with no dwarves, they die. Blockers are declared. Zero dwarves engage my Boris Reckoner in combat. They take three going to 11. It's time, ladies and gentlemen and everyone betwixt. It's time to cast everybody's favorite wrath. Blasphemous Act enters the stack and I hope to fucking God our opponent hasn't got some random shit in green or red that's gonna save them here. And we don't get to see the triggers because our opponent scoops it up. But seeing that we win, the game is ended and we win with a Blasphemous Act on the stack and a Boris Reckoner on a Hornet Nest in play, it makes young Pleasant Kenobi happy. That's right, I'm young. I'm only 21. But 30 damage is my favourite number. We go to game two. After winning gloriously through Blasphemous Acting our opponent, we keep this hand that has Abundant Growth, three lands, a Vizio Remedies, a Prismatic Ending, and a Eldritch Evolution. Our opponent suspenders a search for tomorrow, and we're going to go ahead and play the Birds of Paradise that we freshly draw for top because we're good at this game. 
Opponent bolts the bird, as they've been told to do by many a person on Reddit, I'm assuming. An abundant growth draws us a card by putting it onto our forest. We play a tap land and pass back. Search for tomorrow plus a land drop puts them onto four mana for the turn. They play a prismatic omen and pass back. And it's time for some hot prismatic on prismatic action again. We're gonna... Oh no, shit, I drew a Knight of Autumn. I'm lying to you all. I drew a Knight of Autumn. I hold the prismatic omen for Renin Sixes, and we blow up the prismatic omen with a Knight, and they bolt the Knight in response. That's right, that was a pretty good fucking draw because it means that we can still interact with Venom 6 down the line. Our opponents play a Dwarven Mine generating a Dwarf. They play a Secure Tribe Elder that will get them a land drop. We untap and we do not draw a land. So we're just going to play a Vizier of Remedies and we're now in a weird spot. We can Eldritch Evolution this Vizier into something useful in a moment but not hitting a land drop and having two Blasphemous Acts in hand is not a good place to be. We take two from a Secure Tribe Elder and a Dwarven Token attack. They play a Dwarven Mine and make another fucking Dwarf. Oh, and there's a prime time. <laughs> our three lands look pathetic compared to our opponents. Uh, uh, quick maths, that looks like a million lands. We Eldritch Evolution of Vizier of Remedies. They go ahead and sack the Secure Tribe out of creating two Valakut triggers and shoot us in the face for six. We grab a Hornet's Nest and we hope this is going to be good enough, but I'm not really sure. They play a Dryad of Elysian Groves, makes all lands mountains. They attack with two Dwarf Tokens and a Primeval Titan, which will going to get them two mountains, which will do two times two. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Four copies of Valakut Triggers. Four times three, if I'm correct, and I'm no mathematician, but four times three is about 12 damage. We're, We're fucked. fucked. Once more into the breach with our third game against our Scapeshift opponent. We stick our Sky Serpent in the zone. We crack our Windswept Teeth, we go and get a Forest, and we Abundant Growth ourselves to draw a card, hitting Dustwatch Recruiter. Our opponent suspends nothing on turn one, which is actually pretty good for us because it means they're having a bit of a slower start. We ren and six our windswept teeth back to hand. Our opponent leads on turn two with a secure tribe elder. We fetch up a third land, we get the windswept teeth back to hand with ren and six, and we play a dusk watch recruiter, which remember is the outlet for our infinite mana combo if we assemble both vizier of remedies and devoted druid. Our opponent bolts the dusk watch recruiter and plays their own ren and six, allowing them to hit a land drop on turn three. They're now on four lands thanks to the secure tribe elder from earlier. We untap and we draw Walking Ballista, we play a Perforos, we uptick our Ren, we put a land back in our hand, and now we're looking for a Hornet's Nest ideally. Our opponent hits a land up thanks to Ren and Six, that's right, this is the Ren and Six mirror that no one wanted to see. Our opponent hard casts a search of tomorrow up to six lands and passes back. We draw a Prismatic Ending which allows us to kill the Ren and Six, the only problem is that it doesn't really solve the problem of them being on six fucking, fucking mana. mana. We play a Night of Autumn to gain four life to put us up to 20 because I'm scared of Scape Shift, and we... Uh, shoot them in the face of the Perforce for two, and we're ending the Ren and Six. They untap, and we really hope we don't see a Titan or a Scape Shift here. They play a Wish. <laughs> I'm not going to make you all guess this time. Guess what? Scape Shift here is going to Valakut us, but for how much is the question? I never really understand exactly where we're at in terms of Valakut. They grab one singular Valakut, though, which might have been a mistake. Someone in the comments section could do the maths and figure that out for us. But they hit a Valakut plus some mountains for three triggers and shoot us for nine. Or should I say they shoot Ren and Six for nine? They're scared of us down ticking Ren and Six to get infinite prismatic endings, perhaps, but that doesn't even seem that good against Valakut combo because it doesn't interact with the Valakut in the, in the land base. They stop the Ren and Six from ultimately putting her to one, and they kill our Knight of Autumn so there's no pressure. This is good. We're still on 20 life, which means, barring another escape shift, we aren't going to take a huge chunk, right? So they're going to have to hit us with incremental 3 to 6 damage a turn, giving us some breathing room. We untap and we draw Hornet Nest because I'm really fucking good at magic. We play the Hornet's Nest, which we know... Well, it shoots them for two because of Perfos. We then down to our Ren and Six, make an Insect Token, trigger, shoot them for two again. We play a land, we then play the other Ren and Six in our hand, and we put a land back in our hand, put it up to four, so one Valakut trigger won't kill it. They go ahead and they Valakut away one of our bees, and they Valakut again off of a search for tomorrow. Our Ren and Six down to one, they play a fetch for turn, and they shoot... I can't even remember how they played three lands here. I think they fetch the end of the turn, and they make a Dwarven Token, and they kill Ren and Six. We untap, we play a land, and guess what, everybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is the magic fucking number. It's time to blast. Memphis, act. Everyone. I was going to try and make a joke about blasting an ass. Ass for Miss Blast? We're going to blow up the fucking world. Blasphemous act enters the chat and it resolves. And then these 13 Hornet triggers off of Hornet Nest, they want to know your location. They come in to give you a good old perforous shaped paddle. That's 13 triggers of bee action. And before the bees enter, before the bees enter and trigger the perforous 13 times, 
doing 13 times 2. That's 26. That's right, maths. Magic's just basically maths. 26 damage to our opponent. They scoop it up, and we are victorious. That's right, we beat a real deck with a collection of bees in an 80-card Yorian deck that I forgot even had a companion over the course of an entire league. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm racing towards the 100,000. And while subscriber count doesn't really fucking matter, I really want that silver plaque for my wall. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, how about a video where we play Mono Red Tron, the best version of Tron through some modern games? You can click that link on screen now. Ta-ta for now.